We the People, an explanation from the office in America in the family of nations. We come before you in the family of nations of the United Nations in our official capacity as the citizens of the United States of America in the family of nations, serving this legal notice to inform you and the family of nations in the United Nations that the general government of the Republic, United States of America, has resurrected on the first day of January 2004. Although the current de facto Anglo-Saxon European Administrative U.S. Government, 28 U.S.C. Section 3215, is mirroring the general government us, they remain subjects of the government de jure, which they no longer represent the interest of the true nationals. Aboriginal indigenous people in the general national government of the Republic United States of America, i.e. colored black, Negro, Afro-Americans, African-Americans, Hispanics, Latinos, Indians, and Asian-Americans, i.e. misnomers, here and after referred to as Moorish nationals, of whom are the true Aboriginal landowners of the Republic United States of America. Nevertheless, we have listed our demands below, and for the sake of clarification, it warrants us to submit this in-depth historical fact surrounding the Aboriginal Indigenous Moorish national landowners, which is listed below, sequential, respectfully, we also severed this legal notice upon the heads of states within the United Nations, hoping to bring forth love, peace, happiness and unity among the family of nations in the United Nations. Most importantly, we would like to express our deepest apology to each member within the family of nations, relatives, for our long overdue arrival. However, considering the historical fraud deeply rooted, embedded and hidden in codes including the miseducation of our people regarding self, we seek your indulgence for this lengthy correspondence. Without further ado, we shall proceed with our historical journey of truth, that is, after defining de jure versus de facto, government de facto versus government de jure, government de facto, a government of fact, a government actually exercising power and control, as opposed to the true and lawful government, a government not established according to the constitution of the nation, or not lawfully entitled to recognition of supremacy, but which has nevertheless supplanted or displaced the government de jure, a government deemed unlawful or deemed wrongful or unjust, which nevertheless receives presently habitual obedience from the bulk of the community. See e.g. Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition. Government de jure, a government of right, the true and lawful government established according to the constitution of the nation and lawfully entitled to recognition and supremacy and the administration of the nation, but which is actually cut off from power or control, a government deemed lawful or deemed rightful or just, which nevertheless has been supplanted or displaced. That is to say, which receives not presently, although it received formerly, habitual obedience from the bulk of the community. C.E.G. Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition, United State of America's Aboriginal Indigenous Moors. We are in the de jure preamble, general national government of the United States of America, in the family of nations and resurrected restored preamble free inhabitant qualified common law aboriginal indigenous native and hakdar natural born national of the de jure preamble general government of the united states of america in the family of nations who have declared proclaimed reclaimed recorded and implemented his sovereign posterity rights of national in accord with 8 uscs ss 1101 a 22 a ss 1503 a et al Citizenship in the 1782 to the present seal, de jure preamble general government in the family of nations, according to the law of nations, who having repledged the original pledge of allegiance to the private, national, and official flag of the United States of America, enacted in 1777 and pursuant to 4 USCS Chapter 1 SS1, thereby also having complete and perfect residence in the United States Republic form of government here and after, defines Moors. The term Moor has the ancient root of Emzar founded in the old Maurish Tamarian Maru Amaruka, i.e. the old Moorish language of what has come to be known as Egyptian, Hebrew and America languages respectively. The scholarship word Kemet that has come to mean black land or black people's land is not the ancient word for Egypt. The ancient hieroglyphic clearly shows that the proper term is Tamuri, T, Mr. or Pa Tamera, the ancient land of Egypt. C.E.A. Willis Budge an Egyptian Hieroglyphic Dictionary, E.H.D. Vol 1 P315 and Vol 2 P1050. Tamori Tamera, the Moors or the land of the Moor is the hidden and true nationality of the real ancient Egyptians. The word Kemet is a geographical name where the praiseworthy black dirt settled, Chumtumti and Hamad, root MHMD or Muhammad, one who is praiseworthy or one who is, P, raised up out of and in the darkness or blackness, 
i.e. ignorance. The root word MR, an abbreviation for Mr. and Master, comes from the old Moorish language or letters OML of Mimra manifestation of enlightenment or the thought of God. Mimra or God manifested is another name for ASR. In the Old Testament, ASR is the mysterious unpronounceable name of the Lord who Moses talked with, and not Jehovah or Yahweh. Yah, Ahai Aser Ahai, I am Aser Osiris, I am. See the Torah, by Union of American Hebrew Congregation, TT, 1981, P400, X314, or the Greek word Osiris. Osiris is actually Os plus Iris, and when translated properly means bones and mouth, Os plus a messenger's eye, and to form into, i.e., the messengers of God who became the word that spoke the foundation of the world into existence. C.E.G. O's and Iris and Shorter Oxford English Dictionary by William Little, S.O.E.D., 1933-64. Oz also means to know and Iris to observe, therefore. Osiris also means to know by observation science. Osiris Azar is also called Bay, root Bwai, or Bai, meaning noble, priest, or a form of Osiris and Ra. When the Moorish Empire ruled the world, all bailiffs were bailiffs, the term Bay became Bay and Bai, EHD, Vol LP202 and SOED, P137, SB2, SB3, and Bailiff, Belit. In the ancient history of the distinguished surname Bay, by the Historical Research Society in Orlando, FL, states that these Bay's pioneers became the nucleus of the first settlements from Maine to the Cumberland Gap. They provided much of the stock that produced the early presidents and governors of the United States. In Canada, they settled Nova Scotia the St. Lawrence and Ottawa Valley. The family name Bay provided many prominent contemporaries such as Colonel Bay who created the Rideau Canal and founded Ottawa. Bay in Old English or Moorish English originally meant governor and prince or begbigiki great, C-E-G-S-O-E-D-B. The word Moor Maru is the actual word found in petroglyph on Mount Moriah, Moriah. Moors are the Lords or Jehovah Yahweh is Moorish. For the scholarly word Hebrew, the original ABR, Amr referred to themselves as Marumuri. Illustration number one. The term Mzar also means mountain mound or pyramid. Therefore, Mount Moriah or mountain of the Lord means Moors of the Lord and not Hebrews or Jews, HB the Yehudi Jew. The language of the Hebrews is the national language of the Canaanites, biblically referred to as SPAH Canaan. See General 11.1. And the land of Canaan is the geographic title but not the national title. The Canaanites called themselves MRTU or more to therefore the language. Dialect of the Hebrews is actually a dialectical language of the Moors. See, the word Amaruka, Hamurika, is the origin of the modern term America that has absolutely nothing to do with the made up person historically called Amerigo Vespucci. Nor did Cristobal colon Christopher Columbus discover America or actually exist. The term Amer ICA is far older than the 15th century. In the Time magazine, Hadjik SBN 081290-08473, they produced a copy of the oldest known map of North America, see illustration number two. The article stated that this ancient Libyan Arabic script, see, the first century BC, and in the center of the continent, i.e. Nevada, is the word Emsar, Moor, and possibly being the origin of the word America. Barry Fell, emeritus professor at Harvard University and author of Saga America, Time Book, states that America probably has nothing to do with Amerigo Vespucci. Also see Isis unveiled for more info on this subject. Dr. Fell indicates several pre-Columbian cultures in the United States West, finding rich evidence of an early Arabic presence, including many instances of decorative signatures of the Prophet Muhammad. He suggests important correspondence between Pueblo, city Indian culture, and North African cultures. He infers a major Carthaginian, Canaanites Mortumors trade with North and South America. In an article entitled, Secret Societies in the Ancient Americas, see Ill No. 3, it states, Ancient Masonic Lodges have been discovered among the American Indians, what he called an ancient Indian Masonic Lodge at an Anasazi Indian archaeological site, 80% identical to the Masonic Lodges in America now. In the ancient lodge, there were 50 rock and clay tablets, which he dates 1000 and 1200 AD. Written in what appears to be Arabic, even the name America may be the product of ancient American secret society. In an 1895 edition of a magazine called Lucifer, published the occult promoting theosophical society, the word America, he said that the supreme god of the Mayan culture of Central America, known as Quetzalcoatl elsewhere, was known in Peru as Amaru. Amaru's territory was known as Amaruca. Illustration Friend 5 states, 
Origins Some authorities believe the Indians to be of Hebrew, Maru-Moorish origin. They base this belief on the fact that the Indians were a very religious people. Also saying the Indian tribes had Old Testament legends. They worshipped one great spirit and never idols. Their name of this deity was Allah, the Hebrew name for God. Their form of government was also similar. There are similarities of language. Nahula and Uneka, white people or impure animals. These words describing white people as unclean animals is an important in the connecting of the white slaves to the ancient whites or things of Amorica, i.e. the legendary Atlantis. It is also important that Egypt, Atlantis, and America's predominant population was always depicted as copper coffee complexioned and not really red as the modem Indians or Native American is commonly depicted. At this time, the term Indians should be closely looked at. The term Indian is a later Latin word coming from Hindi or Sindhu, meaning dark-hued and transferring from the older Latin word Ethiopian. The term Ethiopian is not of African origin, and it transfers back to the Greek word Ethiopian, meaning Moorish and Moros dark-hued. Jack D. Forbes in his book entitled Africans and Native Americans, P69 states, In 1524, the people of the Carolina coast were said to be of dark color, not much unlike the Ethiopians. The Charlotte Observer dated Sunday, August 15, 1993, stated that North Carolina in 1690 reported the presence of Moors and that they are the ancestors of a people erroneously called Melungeons. Mr. Forbes also states on P64 that when Africans are referred to in the Jesuit letters, they are always called Negro de Guina, blacks of Guinea to distinguish them from Negro de Terra, blacks of the land of America. And on pages 67 and 71, he states, French Noir, black and Negra, black or dark person. French more more as equivalent to Negro from Guinea. So thus Negro is used for Indian and not for someone from Africa. In any case, it is clear that many Iberians and Italians, whether in Europe or America, were comfortable using Negro, Negri, etc. for American. See e.g. Ill, number six. The copper coffee complexion Negro de Terra are classified in Black's Law Dictionary, fourth and sixth edition, as Femme Couleur Libre, meaning free, libre, colored nation, femme, or people. Black's Law, 6th edition, P6 on 18, Femme Couleur Libre up to the time of the Civil War. This term applied to all persons not of the white race, including Indians. Again, the word Indian originally did not mean Native American or American the way it is used today. However, it did mean Ethiopians, Negro de Terra, Native of America, and Moors. C.E.G. Indy Cassell's New Latin Dictionary, CLD by D.P. Simpson, 1960, P. 299. Note. The term Native American refers to the second group of Americans, the first group esoterically, the Moorish Negris Indians known as the Aboriginal Americans. The third group is the term Indigenous Americans. Words like Native American, American, and many more are words of art. See e.g. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed. to p. 1779, or idiomatic, an accepted phrase or expression having a meaning different from the literal. The Old Moorish Latin, originally called Latimer, Latimer, or Latiner, See Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed. p. 1027, consisted of three three sorts of law Latin. The third or esoteric sort was and is only known to a select few called sages, which consist of idioms, words of art, and also called lawyers Latin or law Latin. Law Latin, the corrupt form of the Latin language employed in the old English law books and legal proceedings. See e.g. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed. p. 1030. This idiomatic lawyer's Latin was developed by the Latimer's Latin Moors long ago in order to maintain absolute control over all judicial proceedings and the administrating Mamluk government continues this practice to the present. The genius of this fork tongue language is found today in the, most of the time, unconscious Moorish males who created sayings like, yo she show is bad, what's up, chill out, etc. As Moors we must reap what we have sown. The second American group, that is the so-called Native Americans, are wards of the government and differ greatly from Aboriginal Americans slash First Americans. The term American is so vague and has totally replaced the phrase citizen of the United States, and this is no accident. CEG words and phrases W and F in a law library for the definition of American as follows. An English subject who enlisted as a seaman on an American vessel floating the American flag. No such flag. The flag of the United States was while enlisted an American under the protection and subject to the laws of the United States equally with a native-born, not natural-born seaman. American is used in a devise, contract, to be used by trustees, guardians, or wardens for the benefit of worthy, deserving, poor, white American Protestants 
This means all descendants of Europeans born in America, especially the inhabitants, not citizens of the United States, see ill number seven. Every so-called civilized nation has a patron saint. Does the members of the family of nations of the United Nations know the patron saint of the United States? Have you ever asked if there is a patron saint and what is his name? The name of the patron saint is Saint Tammany, whose birthday is celebrated on May 1st, Epiphany Moors, and he was a Lenape Delaware chief. The word Tammany is rooted in the words Tammy, ancient Moorish group, and Tame, originally meaning those who tame, that is to say civilization bringers. Tammany also means affable, friendly, or easy to approach. The European denizen proprietors of the United Colonies of America found themselves comfortable and at ease in Tamarnani's presence, while attempting to negotiate an agreement that would allow them to become an annexed part of the Aboriginal One Indigenous Native Moorish United States of America's government in the family of nations. That was, and we believe is headed in the truth hawk of the law, by the Osman Bay's empire. See E.G. Tammany, Dictionary of the American Indian DAI, by John Stoutenberg Jr., 1960, P404. The Olmecian civilization of Central America is considered by most scholars to be the oldest high culture in America. The word Mexico comes from the word Olmec and the coded Moorish word Amexim. This word is a verb, place of the mixing and not a noun. Name. Most scholars deduce this word from Ali or rubber people. However, it would be better translated Ali. Ali exalted ones and the people who bounce back. The Phoenix of Phoenicians, Canaanites, Martimutu to the Moors. The term Olmec when esoterically understood means Almec son of or belonging to Al Allah. Or Elmec those from Mecca, the Meccans. One of the oldest meanings of Mecca, aka Baca, Basolanka spirit, is veteran or belonging to Egypt or TMR, to Moors. The original Meccan, Old Meccans, was of the family Imran. In the Quran by A. Yusuf Ali, Surah Chapati, 3 Eyat, verse 32 33, it states Allah did choose Adam Noah, the family of Abraham, and the family of Imran above, exalted, Ali Oli Oli, all people, offspring one of the other. And God heareth and knoweth all things. Who was and is Imran, the last of the chosen family of God? Imran is a word of art term that can be fully comprehended when one applies the ancient Moorish Arabic 3 3 radical roots. In a concordance of the Quran, COQ, by Hannah E. Cassis, P266 and 267, the idiom term Imran becomes Ember Moor. The Ind is silent and the letter N is a terminal plural that becomes the modern S, therefore, being silent in Mernzitars, Moors. Also the letter Nomti, none meaning water, sea and ocean, adding to the meaning of the word Imran i.e. Moors, merman or Mormon navigators, helmsmen and governors. Remember the first governors or presidents of the United States were Moors with the titles of Bay. Note, none is also new or nut meaning sky, heaven, celestial abode or from high. In the book Africa and the Discovery of America Black God of Ancient America states the following. The first Americans were black. The scholarly Latin author C.C. C. Mark explains the strong probability that black people were the first people in America out of which later came the red, American race, the second people. The Native Americans also referred to the Leni Lenape and Anasazi as the old ones or old enemies. It is likely that we repeat that long ago the youthful America was also a Negro continent and that the Ottomies, Ottoman of Mexico, are the remains of the aboriginal Negro race out of which developed later what is known as the red or American race. Professor Alexander Jan Wuthenau Unexpected face in ancient America adds how black people were present in America in the most ancient or pre-classical times. The startling fact is that in all parts of Mexico, archaeological pieces representing Negro or Negroid people have been found, especially in archaic or pre-classic sites. In this regards, the testimony of Nicolas Leon proves on how ancient the African presence was in America. In fact, he says black people were the original people, the first people, of Mexico. The memories of them in the most ancient traditions induce us to believe that the Negro were the first inhabitants of Mexico. Historia General de Mexico, Mexico, 1919. Colonel A. Braghine says that he saw in a collection in Ecuador a statuette of a Negro that is at least 20,000 years old. The Show of Atlantis, PP 4042 NY, 1940.